Hey brothers and sisters, I am really winging it this time because um, I just wanted to encourage you because Jesus is still coming. He is coming. I don't know the day. I have days that I hope. I hope every day. Um, but he is speaking all the time and I'm trying to be a good and faithful servant to deliver his messages and I know that I'm missing a lot but um, you know that's my job so I'm gonna just tell you some things that uh, that are really amazing to me is <laughs> I go I go to visit the pregnant women now they have removed me it's like systematically they are removing me from doing these dog visits I believe that it is uh, Christian persecution except that it's not being it's just it's like I get an email and say and it just says you're removed and you don't need to visit here anymore so anyway I don't know what's going on I pray for uh, the woman who's making these decisions it could be just um, senility it could be it could also be um, I never I've never met her anyway but the uh, so this was supposed to be my I got removed last night from the team uh, from this visit that I did today I got removed from that team and the woman that I do that with is Jewish so um, I had sent her an email and said listen I'm coming I'm gonna go ahead and come today but I won't come next month for your team but you know Paul has always really the thing that has amazed me the most about Paul is that Paul was willing to give up his salvation for his Jewish brethren and I know that I'm not willing to give up I mean I love people I'm, I'm willing to die for anybody really I feel like I am really willing to die for anybody but I am not willing to give up my salvation my salvation is my most precious jewel my pearl of great price so anyway we go to visit and it turns out um, there are 10 rooms after I did that video about the tens right there are 10 rooms and I go um, with sorry I got a little something in my throat um, I go and uh, I've never had this happen before there was first of all I, I so the 10 rooms I'm going to five of them one woman there were two women that had twins one woman had identical twin girls that always excites me it just does I have identical twin girls so that excites me but I've never had this happen before and the volunteer that was with me had never seen it before either and I haven't seen it at any other of the hospital visits I did Lexi gets up in the bed and this girl just threw herself on top of Lexi so it's a young a young a young black woman I don't know how old she is white fingernails though I did notice those you don't see those all that often at least around here and Lexi gets on the bed with her and she just laid down on her and held her held her like you know this is my my long lost baby dog right she's never had a dog before and we were in that room for 10 or 15 minutes when I wasn't even sure she was pregnant she didn't talk about herself <coughs> she was she was just in love with Lexi, like love at first sight. And, and Lorraine and I were looking and going, wow, this is the most incredible thing. And she was, this is where therapy dogs, it was really like she, Lexi was giving her this love, this love. It was absolutely so beautiful that if that was Lexi's last visit, I would be, I would be blown away because it was so beautiful. And even even Lorraine went and told the other uh, the other uh, volunteers about this because it was so unusual. And as I was driving home, I was thinking, you know that verse about uh, you may have entertained angels. It was just um, it was just that perfect of a of a visit where this girl was just in tune. Now the only thing I do know is near the end of it, she said. She didn't care how long she was in the hospital, that all she cared about was having a healthy baby. That's all she cared about, was having a healthy baby. It was almost like she was willing to give her life for her baby. It was just, it was absolutely so beautiful. Um, 
so next Friday, if we're still here, I am supposed to go back unless they decide to tell me I'm not going to do that visit either. So we will see. Now, as I'm walking out, this is <laughs> this is just too, too bizarre. What, uh, one of the other rooms, so the Jewish woman is telling me about this. And, uh, and the reason why, you know, as I'm driving down the hospital, normally I'm praying for the visit. But I was really thinking about um, how blessed, I mean, I don't think I've got any Jewish blood in me, but how blessed to be a Gentile that has been grafted in to the vine. And, and how, you know, it breaks my heart to see, um, it breaks my heart to see Jews being persecuted and Christians being persecuted. But... I truly do love the Jews and you know I thought wow um, how blessed I am that I can read the Old Testament and and see Jesus in the Old Testament when so many can't I'm just so grateful I'm just so grateful to God that he's given me eyes to see that and I think about how rich you know the Psalms are and to be able to read the Proverbs and to read Isaiah and all of this I was just on the way that's all I could think about was just this you know, I am the child of God, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Is that not just amazing? It's just amazing that he would, that he would graft any of us in to be abiding in the vine, which is Romans 11. It's just, it's just so incredibly awesome that he would choose any of us because we all deserve to go to hell. We're born into sin. Every single one of us is born into sin. And even the things that we try to do are uh, filthy rags to him. But he chose us. Not only did he choose us to be grafted in, but he gave us the opportunity to abide in the vine every single day and to hear his voice and to know him and to love him. So as we're leaving, she, uh, the Jewish woman said, you won't believe this, Terry. One of the rooms that we went into had a four-year-old girl reading and she didn't tell me if she was Jewish but this is what she said she said there was a four-year-old girl pretending to read a book about Moses now I believe very strongly that Moses and Elijah are the two witnesses the Mount uh, uh, the transfer uh, the transfiguration was with Moses and Elijah and Jesus okay so so she's like, so I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty cool that she would even be talking about reading a book about Moses. And then she, I don't know if it was the same room or a different room, but get this, dun da da da. <laughs> she said, Terry, there was a, yeah, I think it was a different room. There, I think it was a different room. There was a woman who is naming her baby Messiah. Now, we know, you know, you can actually Google it. It's on Wikipedia, I think. You can get Google how many people have said that they're the Christ. There are a whole bunch of people. It's gotten to where there are many, many more, right? With uh, social media, we find out a lot, about a lot more of them. But throughout history, there have been people who've said they're Jesus. And then, what are the odds? I mean, I've been doing, I've been doing uh, hospital visits for babies for five years and what are the odds that right after Israel has turned 71 that a woman is naming her baby Messiah <laughs> oh it's a wacky world we're in so I was driving home you know trying to process all of that not looking at car tags um, and oh Nope, sorry. Before we, and then as we're leaving the hospital and I'm talking with the Jewish woman, basically about how uh, I am being removed from this organization bit by bit, slowly and surely. Um, she, <laughs> we were standing out there in a, a beautiful baby and, and the mother were in a wheelchair getting ready to go home and dad was there filming it and everything. And I said, I said, oh, wow, just a beautiful baby. I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's we mothers. We love going to the hospital and seeing babies being born and, and seeing women who care about having their children. Um, by the way, there's been some really great developments in the state of Georgia and Alabama on uh, anti-abortion. Heartbeat, no heartbeat, uh, no abortion after heartbeat in Georgia. And I think 
I think Alabama just said no abortion, period. I think they're closing down their abortion clinics. Yay! But that is the thing. It's like um, the miracle, the miracle of life. And, you know, that this baby is formed from the very beginning of conception. It's just so amazing. So then I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the mother and the dad and the baby. I'm like, oh, how beautiful. You know, what's your baby's name? And sh they said, James. Well, I love the book of James. And, you know, James is the book of faith without works is dead. And James is also... Um, <laughs> It has that, it has uh, James chapter 4 about drawing close to God and he'll draw close to you. It has James chapter 4 about you adulterers. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy to God? You adulterers, y'all know I'm really big on, hey, repent of adultery. All forms of sexual immorality other than with your first husband, if you're a woman, or your first uh, wife, if you're a man, all of it is adultery. And, and you know, James chapter 4 is just a very big important chapter, but then also James chapter 3 talks about how we need to control our tongues. And it starts off with the really scary admonition for those of us who do YouTube videos. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church. Well, we are the church. This isn't the building. This is, we are the church. So, it, so you know, if I'm teaching here as a representative of God as the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. And then it says in verse 10, So blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. We should only be giving out blessings with our words. And then verse 13, If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. So there are some key words in there that a lot of people on YouTube can't stand, right? Wise, understanding God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, not just giving it lip service, doing good works. <laughs> oh my goodness. And um, let's see, but if you aren't bitterly je jealous, and there is, if, but if you are bitterly jealous, you know, the heart can be very jealous. The heart can covet. The heart can be jealous. Even if, even if you don't say it in your words, your heart can still be thinking jealous thoughts and be um, coveting what other people have. And so you need to repent and, and turn. You got to change it. You got you to gotta confess it that this is not of God. And you got to confess it and repent to turn from your sin. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. We can have demonic influences. So we have to get rid of the demons. We have to confess them, re confess our thoughts of our mind and our hearts, and, um, and rebuke the devil so that he doesn't have any authority over your mind or your heart anymore. Your heart and your mind belong to Jesus Christ. Is the mind of Christ, the heart, the stony, stubborn heart has been taken out. You have been given a new heart, tender and responsive and obedient to God's word. Um, and then verse 4, uh, excuse me, in uh, chapter 4, Don't speak evil of each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. Now, isn't that interesting? Everybody's like, oh, we are not under the law. Well, isn't that funny that in James, because they don't get it that the, when it says we're not under the law, it's talking about the Mosaic law. We're under God's law, which has existed from, from before ever, the world was ever created, long before Moses' law. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, 
not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone who gave the law is the judge. He has he alone has the power to save or to destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Well, so many people will say that that we're judging them. When we're not judging them, we are we are speaking the truth in love, telling them that judgment is coming and an ignorance of God's law is not going to save you from the judgment that's coming. The law is the law and it is good. In fact, uh, I think it's in 1 Timothy chapter 1, maybe verse 9, it says that the law is good when it's used lawfully. And then it says that it's it is, um, oh, let me see. It, it, oh, goodness. <laughs> I thought I had that one memorized. The law is good when it is used lawfully. I'm pretty sure it's 1 Timothy 1 9. Sorry. Like I said, I just jumped on here just to give some glory to God. 1 Timothy 1. Ah, yeah, I got it right. I'm better at addresses than I am word for word. Uh, verse 8. Oh, wow, there's Moses in there. Well, since, I, since Moses was in the hospital visit, let me start with verse 7. Um, so this is 1 Timothy 1. Well, <laughs> oh, I'm going to just read a few verses I have underlined. Uh, in verse 3, stop those whose teaching is contrary to the truth. So see, that's not judging. That is saying, hey, we got some false teachers in here, and we're supposed to stop them from teaching what is contrary to the truth. Because we don't want people to believe the lies, plus it's giving the devil the lies. And he's been lying and lying and lying, and there are so many Christians that don't even know the truth anymore. And they believe what they believe the lies of the devil about who they are. They believe the lies of the devil of what the church has told them. Um, the purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart. The old heart is gone. The new heart. A clear conscience. Well, our conscience is, is our, our mind. Our conscience is what tells us we know what's right and wrong. And if you keep on saying, well, it's really not that bad, or he really is overlooking this, you know, um, Michaela Cooper, she did a really great, she has 200 verses about the false doctrine of once saved, always saved. But, you know, if you have a, a heart that is dark, that has sin in it, and you put the cross over it and say that Jesus isn't look, uh, the, the God the Father doesn't see your sin, he only sees Jesus, well, you're lying to yourself because God says that it, you have to have the love that is from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. Your faith is not genuine. Back to James, uh, the book of James. Really, you have no excuse. If you, if you haven't, I'm <laughs> sorry, but if you haven't read the book of James lately, and here I've told you that the baby's name was James, it's only four chapters, maybe five, maybe five chapters. But, but you know, stop watching YouTube and read your Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. He wants to talk to you. He, he, he wants people to go in the rapture. He does. He really, really does. He, he's, he, is, he is full of love and compassion and mercy and grace but the time is now when someone tells you what you need to do and you're like oh I'll put that off or oh really she's just you know she just likes to run on and on and on well someday I am gonna be gone and you will know maybe even you know maybe somebody will find this who, who's finding it after the raptures happened you will know why you missed it because you kept on saying, well, I'll put that off. I'll put that off. So, these people that don't have a pure heart and a clean conscience, a clear conscience and a genuine faith. Um, 
they have missed the whole point. They have turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless discussions. They're wasting their time on YouTube. They're wasting their time in comments. Um, we can really do a lot on YouTube with encouraging each other in the comments. And yes, when we see somebody who is an error, we can try to correct them. But at a certain point, you just got to say, wow, all they, are, all they are is about trying to bring others down instead of lifting other people up. And so their faith really isn't genuine. We know it because of what comes out of the mouth is what is inside the heart. The heart, uh, the mouth speaks from what is inside the heart. Okay, so then verse 7. They want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses. You see, once again, the law of Moses. But they don't know what they're talking about, even though they speak so confidently. We know that the law is good when used correctly. So this is God's law, Jesus' commands. For the law was not intended for people who do what is right, the righteous, it is for people who are lawless and rebellious. Who are saying, well, God didn't really say that. Surely God doesn't expect me to be unhappy. He wants my best life now, right? It is for people who are lawless and rebellious, who are ungodly and sinful. Sinful. Instead of holy. Those who consider nothing sacred and defile what is holy, who kill their father or mother, who commit other murders. And hatred, hatred is the same thing as murder. Verse 10, for the law, no, the law is for people who are sexually immoral. You see why I harp on this? Because sexually immoral people are going to hell they're not going in the rapture I don't think they're gonna get much of a chance in the tribulation to be saved it's it is time time to stop the sin the law is for people who are sexually immoral or practice homosexuality or slave traders uh, or kidnappers liars Promise breakers. A person who does not keep their vows and divorces and remarries is a not only sexually immoral, they are a promise breaker. They made vows to God. God saw the marriage. God <laughs> made the marriage. Or those who do anything else that contradicts wholesome teaching. Wholesome teaching. That comes from the glorious good news entrusted to me by our blessed God. Um, and then um, another thing that Michaela is really good at I mean really she's really uh, very very edifying really she's an excellent Bible teacher Michaela Cooper M-I-K-A-Y-A-L-A K-O-O-P-E-R you know I put these I spend time on the description boxes I put links into the description boxes to have this be like the jumping off point so that you can go look at other people's messages and that you can be learning and growing because every day is a day to learn. We are not supposed to stay stagnant in our faith. We're supposed to learn from each other. That is really what the church is supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be learning from each other. Um, oh gosh, Michaela. Oh, oh, she loves 1 John which I love 1 John. I love John 17. Today is May 17th. I love John 17. And also she loves 1 John. Well, a lot of people will use the excuse of 1 John 1. I think it's 1 John 1, 9. That says, you know, if we sin, we have an advocate in the Lord Jesus. Well, once you have been born again, we're supposed to be changed from... Uh, from our sinful state, our sinful nature, into our new nature, our new creation in the Holy Spirit, so that then we we change positionally to a saint, one of God's holy people. So that if we sin, it is an accidental sin. That we can also repent and be done with it and not and not do it again. But it's not that we can say grace covers it. Romans six, seven and eight should always be read 
together, which it just amazes me. It's like, Michaela, the stuff that she's talking about, I've been talking about for two years. Romans 6, do we keep on sinning so that grace may abound? Never, never, no. We've died to our sinful nature. We are made new in Christ Jesus. Um, to walk afresh. So then in 1 John 1, for people to be making these excuses, then what do they do when they get to, you know, you got to read the whole thing together. It's a short little letter too. 1 John, short little letter. But 1 John 3 says, if we keep on sinning, we belong to the devil. We are not even a child of God. We belong to the devil. And I doubt that there anybody, I doubt there's anybody still listening to me that would be a child of the devil because you've already clicked on, clicked off. But um, a child of God has been changed to be born of the Spirit, to walk by the Holy Spirit, to listen to God's instructions, to listen to His voice every, every morning. He is available. Um, he also told me yesterday, I think it was yesterday, Maybe it's today. Um, he told me, rem I think it was yesterday, remember to ask for my favor. Remember to ask for my favor. And I'm, so that doesn't mean that I was sinning because I hadn't asked for his favor. It was like him, the father, saying, listen, Terry, you, you need to be, uh, you need to think about this and can be consistent and ask for my favor because he goes ahead of me, right? No weapon formed against me shall stand, and he goes ahead of me. In Isaiah, where it says, um, you'll hear a voice behind you telling you which way to go, to the left or to the right. But then also, Jesus walks ahead of us. So, uh, and I read a, a really cool article that says that the mighty hand, the mighty arm of God is Jesus, and then the mighty hand of God is the Holy Spirit. When I can't remember a week or two ago, maybe two weeks ago, at 7:25 in the morning, could that be Daniel 7:25? I don't know. Um, God told me. Uh, he told me, "Tell them about my mighty hand." And then here, a few weeks later, today, I find out that the arm is Jesus and the hand is the Holy Spirit. I love that. I love that. So see, that gives me more. Like I look, I looked into it. Someone's description box. I think it was Goose Seven Seven Seven. I look into his description box. I see this thing about being baptized by the Holy Spirit, which I know that I'm baptized by the Holy Spirit, and then I learn and I get encouraged and edified to learn more about it because um, other people have written things, and it you know in YouTube you know you get a, a short little video that's not the same as spending quality time uh with with reading what other people have written or with uh spending time in the word okay so she so um michaela has the thing about um first john three and is there anything else i'm supposed to say Well, since I'm open to 1 Timothy, let me just tell you, um, there was a time, there was, I had an instance one time, I may have already shared it a couple of years ago, but I had an instant, instance, one instance one time where uh, I thought I was going to be raped. And I was able to talk my way out of it, um, but I was fearful for well, in my Bible I wrote, I was fearful for four days and that God gave me a promise, which was Second Th Thessalonians 3.3, 3, which says, um, The Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Have no fear of the devil. He, is, he, he has no authority over you. You belong to God. If you are walking with the Holy Spirit, if you have turned from your sin and you are walking in victory, you, He has no authority over you. So don't, don't let Him make you be fearful. Don't let Him make you be fearful. And then in um, 2 Thessalonians 2, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God our Father 
who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal comfort and wonderful hope. Comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and you say. So I call this a Trinity verse because it has the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father and it says who loved us and by his grace gave us our eternal comfort and the Holy Spirit is our comforter is our comforter I will try to put the article in the description box because it had a whole list of the different um, works of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is working in you giving you the power to obey and to do what pleases him I think that is uh, Philippians 2 13 I believe okay and then also I just wanted to you know the other night when I did that song I wrote the song uh, to the California Dreamin and um, and then I just went outside and just did a really quick kind of uh, I was just sitting on the steps of my front door and I don't have a good camera on my phone and so the moon you know it all grainy and stuff and that's not really what it was about but I was just thinking about because this song has blessed me the song has blessed me and you know I'm not taking any credit for writing this song I, obviously I didn't write the tune the tune is to California Dreaming I'm not taking any credit for how well I sang it or didn't sing it I am trying to uh, encourage you that Jesus is coming and these these words to this song um, let me show you how it let me, let me show you how it goes okay look I write this song and you see I'm writing it and maybe making a couple of corrections but I was listening to the Holy Spirit as I'm writing it right so I, I'm singing this tune for a couple of days and then I, all of a sudden I'm like huh huh maybe I'm supposed to write some new lyrics to this song and I think I wrote I wrote the new lyrics in maybe 45 minutes maybe an hour but maybe probably less actually um, but you see how as I'm writing it very few it's really like it's like he's giving it to me to write down very few things and then the interlude which doesn't have any um, the interlude doesn't have any it's just in, it's instrumental but I wrote these words to it too so let me just you know I want to give glory to God because um, he has blessed me with being with music he's blessed me with music and if your soul is thirsty and if you don't wake up in the morning with an attitude of praise and gratitude get your get your music going get your music going because your music is what feeds your soul and you know the funny thing too is you know I know I'm the numbers nut but um, it's funny that music is also mathematical right there are eight notes to an octave eight new beginnings and uh, you know Amazing Grace was I don't know if you've ever seen that Whit Whitney or Whit Whitney Phillips I think um, he talks about the amazing grace was written on the black notes and that all of the all of the um, slave songs the you know Christian slave songs are written on the black notes um, that's just he's it's just a wonderful story but anyway I'm just gonna try to do it one more time and uh, see if I can do a little bit I don't know <laughs> You know, I would have loved it if y'all were all with me while I was writing the song, and then we could have all just sung around together. So maybe we'll be in heaven soon, and I'm going to be the song leader. I've already, I already have good plans. I've got a swimming pool with these. No, I've got a swimming pool. Yes, I do, with this incredible blue water, and I have a pond with these incredible fish. And uh, and this morning um, I had a, a, a downy woodpecker. Um, that I found uh, dead and I did <laughs> I had the faith that maybe I could bring it back to life I uh, oh yeah maybe I should tell that story okay I have the faith that I could bring something back to life because Elijah did it Paul did it uh, I can't remember all the people that did it but I believe that I could I have the faith for that 
don't know about a human but i have had the faith for a bird so i picked up the bird and blew on it and held it and prayed over it it's a beautiful little downy woodpecker now one of the reasons why i have the faith is because um in 2013 i think so i've been born again since the, uh, 2005 i believe it was in 20 2013 I had walked out, out, I was. I only worked for a year and a half as a receptionist, okay, uh, since I had my children. And I was, uh, I was working as a receptionist, and I went and took a break, and I went outside, and there was a little um, goldfinch, beautiful yellow American goldfinch that had hit the glass, right? And I picked it up, and I thought, you know, it, it, it looked like it had just happened, but it appeared to be dead. I couldn't tell that it was alive. So I have the faith. And I prayed over it. I sat there. And I'm praying over it. And I'm blowing on it. And calling on Jesus' name. I can't tell if it's dead or alive. I can't tell. I don't remember if it had a heartbeat. I mean, how do you tell if a bird has a heartbeat? <laughs> I don't know. It's just this little bird in my hand, right? And so I'm sitting out there. I'm thinking, wow. Uh, God... I want to, you know, I, I'm spending my whole break on it. I'm thinking, am I going to get in trouble? Are they going to realize I'm missing? And this was in a uh, office building that backed up to uh, Big Creek in Atlanta, in North Atlanta. And so it's all woods, and the greenway is there where people can walk, but you can't see any, you can't see the creek. It's just all woods. And I think this was pretty miraculous. A black cat starts walking out of the woods towards me and the bird. As I'm sitting there uh, on the bench outside the office building, and I said to the little bird, I said, okay, it's now or never. Either you're going to get up and fly, or I'm going to have to leave, <laughs> and, the, and the cat's going to get you. And y'all, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. And this bird stood up in my hand and flew off and flew up high to the tall trees in the woods so I'm giving glory to God I don't know if the bird was dead or just stunned I don't know but the timing of it was absolutely beautiful and miraculous and I feel sure that our heavenly birds that we love are going to be all around our heavenly homes and we are just going to be amazed amazed at what is in store for us in heaven so I hope you're encouraged about that. Let me try one more time to sing this song. Okay. Looking up to heaven, Jesus made the only way. All the saints await for that blessed day. When the trumpet sounded with the archangel's voice, shouting down from heaven, God's kingdom will rejoice. Stop going to a church. Bum, bum, bum. He's in my heart today. Well, I got down on my knees and I began to pray. Lord Jesus, count me worthy. He knows I'm going to obey. Looking up to heaven. For such a blessed day, memories as I wait on the sunlight. Hallelujah, the King will come. Hallelujah. Oh God, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Our Savior, we adore. Oh God, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord, the King. All the leaves are green and the sky is blue. I've been on a walk. Holy Spirit's the way. As I sit here longing, I could leave today. Looking up to heaven for such a blessed day. God bless you.
come sing along with me in heaven, okay? I want you. I want you to come with me. I love you. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.